This condo, it's a pied-à-terre for Paula and Fraser. They do a lot of business in Toronto. They have a lot of friends in Toronto. So they just bought this condo downtown and they wanted to make it feel like home, a little bit more like their house in Prince Edward County. When we first got here, it was straight out of the 80s. There was a lot of black marble and mirrors. Everything was closed in. There was nothing really cohesive about it. So when Paula called me, the first conversation we had, she said, we just bought this condo and I hate it. What can you do? Um, so that was where we started. When you're living in a condo, one of the important things is that it feels like home, and especially for people who are downsizing from houses or people who have a condo as a second home, you know, they're used to something different. Paula and Fraser especially like the feel of having the crown moldings and the detailing, and so we wanted to bring those into the condo, and there's no reason why you can't have those. So we wanted to incorporate a lot more traditional elements than what you might normally think of in a downtown condo. The kitchen was really very enclosed and the goal was to make it open, make it more airy. They can be in the kitchen, they can be in the living room. We added some bar stools so that there's an open flow to the main living area and that everybody who's in this space can interact with each other. One of the things that we had to work around with this kitchen, initially we wanted to build an island, but once we opened up the walls, we found that there were stacks for the cable and the telephone leading up and down to the units above and below. So what I did was design these columns and built this peninsula that is sort of built into and around them. And then I centered the stove and the hood so that when you're sitting in the living room and you look through, it's framed between the columns and we added the sconces so that it looked purposeful. We did do new floors. This was actually an interesting little trick because you don't often see floors like this in a condo because the floors are concrete. So you can't nail into the floors. So we put down a glue down subfloor and then we were able to nail the traditional hardwood into the subfloor. You do give up a little bit of ceiling height, but I think it makes up for it in the overall look. Because we had some issues with lighting in this condo, being there really wasn't much of any, we had to get creative in how we were going to use the ceiling and bring in some light. In the kitchen, we created sort of a coffered effect and recessed small LED lights. And in the entrance area, we created a ceiling detail that just drops it down a little bit and we were able to install a lot more lighting and at the same time, make it look like it was a decorative feature. In the foyer area, we've actually just put a little bench there. We incorporated hardwood floors and a little bit of slate tile. We added the panel molding. So again, that brings in some of the traditional features that you might find in the foyer of a home. The other major renovation spot was the master bathroom. We reclaimed two small closets that were outside the bathroom. By taking the space from those extra closets, we were able to create a really nice big vanity. So there's lots of storage and there's lots of space for Paula and Fraser to be at the sinks and not get in each other's way. I like using dark wood on bathroom vanities when we do a light bathroom. I do that a lot. It creates a really nice sense of contrast and it just gives it a feeling of opulence. Paula loves her jewelry and, and her makeup and so she wanted a space that was designated for her. So we did the makeup vanity area and a very large built-in to give some extra storage space for their clothing. This was a really fun project to do and all the limitations with the condo structure itself made it a really creative and interesting challenge.